Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevin Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today, I want to talk about virtual credit card payments received from insurance companies. But first, please check out my website, www.integralclinicsolutions.com. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video is helpful and any other videos you have watched of mine, if you haven't hit that thumbs up, please go back and do so. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, virtual credit card payments. <sighs> I am going to be very honest with you and that's why I'm taking a deep breath. I really loathe the virtual credit card payments that insurance companies pay providers for services with. I am very annoyed by it. I feel like it's very unnecessary and I feel like they kind of dupe you into it if you're not looking at your contract verbiage very well on how they're going to remit payment to you and you don't opt out or you don't choose a different method, they send you these virtual credit cards. Usually the virtual credit cards are faxed to you or mailed to you in snail mail and it's just a card printed on a sheet of paper where you have to manually enter the credit card information in order to process the payment. One, I don't like the waste of the paper. I'm, I don't like to waste paper in general and I feel like this is very unnecessary waste of paper. Two, you get charged more, most likely, if you check your merchant services agreement. Every time you have to manually key in a credit card, you get charged a higher fee. So basically, they're paying you money, but then you have to pay money to process that payment, and that just seems really unnecessary and very rude, in my opinion. And Three, I feel like it could be easily grabbed by somebody who maybe has poor intentions and they could run it on their own and get that payment and there's no like true security in it. So I have issues with that. So I have a few different issues with it and a lot of providers, especially new practice owners, are not aware that this is a possibility of payment read your contracts. Your contracts are gonna tell you if you're going to be receiving these third-party virtual credit card payments. And yes, they come from a third party that the insurance company uses. And I was very good at calling the phone number on those pages and telling them that I was not going to run the credit card and I expected them to send me a paper check. Yes, it's paper, but it was buying me time to hopefully be able to enroll in electronic funds transfer or ACH for that insurance company. And so in the meantime, I wanted paper checks. I recommend you do the same. I recommend anytime you can enroll in electronic remittance advices or ERAs, which are the electronic EOBs, and any kind of electronic payment transfers, whether it's ACH or EFT into your bank account directly, I encourage it because it's faster, it's more secure, and it's just less time anybody needs to be touching stuff and it's efficient. If they don't offer EFT, then you would want to continue asking them to send paper checks. And I know that sounds ridiculous, and now they've caught on to this, so a lot of insurance companies will tell you that they're gonna charge you to send a check. So you would have to, I guess, weigh the charge of your merchant service fee and the time of the staff member to process that credit card payment versus how much they're charging for that paper check, but you need to look at it, you need to evaluate it and make the best decision for your business. Maybe you don't have a problem with the virtual credit cards and that's great and you can just keep on doing what you're doing, but I do suggest having a very strict workflow with the staff who touch it, who run it, who check it, all of that because it can easily get missed, it could get not ran. I mean, there's so many things that could happen. At least with a check, it has a little bit more security behind it. And I know you still have to take it to the bank and whatnot. That's why I really do feel like EFT ACH is the way to go. I'm bringing up this topic specifically because there has been an update from 
the Medicaid of Massachusetts that starting in January of 2024, United Healthcare Community Plan, which is an MCO plan for Medicaid in the state of Massachusetts, will no longer be sending those virtual credit cards. You will have to log on to the United Healthcare website and you will have to go obtain that credit card information to run. So you not only are you going to have to manually run it, and but you're gonna to have to make sure that you're remembering to log in to go retrieve that information in order to run it. It's not coming to you via fax or in the mail. So that's adding a whole nother level of maybe conveniently making it more of a burden on you so that you might forget and they get to keep that money because you forget to log in or somebody drops the ball and doesn't retrieve that information to process the payment. They do offer EFT ACH, which is awesome, and I encourage everybody who lives in Massachusetts or who takes the United Healthcare Community Plan in the state of Massachusetts to enroll in EFT and ACH before the first of the year so you don't have to worry about it. But I wouldn't be surprised if they adopt this through their other states United Healthcare Community Plan because that's not the only state that United Healthcare offers this MCO plan. And so I know Ohio does, I know I think Tennessee does. Uh, there's multiple because they're a national payer. So I would definitely make sure that if you're in a state that has a UHC Community Plan, MCO Medicaid plan, and you accept patients, you see patients with that insurance, that you just make sure that you're enrolled in EFT ACH and then you won't have to worry about it in the future because if they do adopt the same thing they're doing in Massachusetts, you don't have to worry about it. Again, when you get those virtual credit card uh, sheets, it will tell you there's a phone number to call if you have a question. Sometimes it has guidance on how to enroll in EFTs. If not, call the phone number and ask them if they offer EFTs. I've experienced that as well, and they give me where I need to go on and do so. Also with those virtual credit cards, sometimes they don't include the EOBs with them, and so that can be really confusing. You have to make sure you have some explanation of payment for those payments. So making sure that either you're receiving the ERAs associated with them or finding out how to retrieve that information so you can post it and not mess up all of your aging. If you have any questions or comments about that, please leave that in the comments below. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please share with all your colleagues, especially if you're in a state that accepts United Healthcare Community Plan, and especially if you're in Massachusetts and you accept that plan because you want people to be aware of this before it goes into effect in January 2024. Take care of yourself. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.